Well, if you don't have that much confidence in the trees or you're not really sure what to do in there, this is gonna help you. Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Jordan, PSIA national team member, and we're here in beautiful, sunny Aspen, Colorado. Hey, so today we're gonna take a break from skiing on the groom, and we're gonna head into those trees. What do I love about skiing in the trees? Uh, it's the freedom, the ability to kind of pick your own path and really flow through there. A lot of people don't know where or when to turn, and that's what we're really gonna address with some of the tips in this video. Am I ready to jump into the trees? Well, here's a couple things you wanna ask yourself. Can I make confident parallel turns on the groomers? Can I stop when and where I want to? Anytime we jump into the trees, our risk factor is gonna go up. Why? Because trees don't move, all right? And you don't really wanna wrap yourself around one of those things. First off, we're gonna take either our pole straps or if we click into poles, we're gonna make sure that we remove that. Why? Because if pole gets stuck in a tree or something, it's not gonna take my arm with it. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my goggles down. There's a lot of low hanging branches, uh, you know, hopefully the snow is really good and powdery and so it's kicking up in my face. I wanna be able to see uh, where I'm going. The other thing I can do is I can ski with a buddy, ski with a friend. When I go into the trees, safety in numbers, we all go in together. Uh, we may get separated, that's okay, but we need some kind of way to communicate. So we can use a whistle like, or a yodel or something like that, just to let my friend know where I am. So before we head into the trees, we're gonna go warm up. And why is it important for your body to be warm? Because you want your muscles to be able to respond when you need them. And you may need to make some quick decisions and quick turns in the trees. We're gonna do the fast turn challenge. I'm shooting for 25 or more. Let's see how we go. Start turning quickly in three, two, one. All right, go. here we go. One, starting to turn. Two, three, four, five, okay. six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, okay, twenty-eight, up to twenty-nine. 30. We got thirty on that one. All right, so again, that's just to warm you up and you're looking for a 25, that's your challenge or more so that you can use those short turns that you practice here over in there in the trees. In the trees, I'm gonna have to make my decisions a lot quicker and I'm really gonna have to get good at moving my body or uh, very rapid movements. So we're gonna do a hockey stop uh, and all I'm gonna do is really pay attention to turning my legs, actually coming to a stop. What you wanna be able to do is come to a stop, but also be able to get out of it and move so that you can maneuver around a tree, around a stump, around an obstacle, maybe a creek bed, something like that. And I'm gonna do it out here on the groomed so that I can get better at it before I take it into the trees. So let's do some. I'm gonna do about three seconds, practice each way, and I'll talk you through it, come on. All right, so what I'm trying to do is turn my legs really quickly. I'm trying to practice on both sides and actually come to a stop. As you notice, I'll actually go down. I may even plant my pole here because I'm having a high edge angle. And what I commonly see people do is they might lean a little bit up the hill this way and they might do it, but they don't do it fast enough. And now all of a sudden I haven't actually stopped. You want to be able to come to a stop because if there's a tree or a root or something in front of you and you actually do need to stop, you want to be able to stop right there. All right, so now we've done some hockey stops on the groom. Let's take it to the ungroomed. All right, I'm going to make a couple turns here and then I'm going to come to a stop. All right, 
So I'm gonna turn and turn and then, oh, oh, there's a tree. I need to stop, all right? I'm gonna turn a little bit, turn a little bit. Oh, there's a tree. I need to stop, okay? So I'm just looking again for those very rapid movements. All right, I'm gonna keep on going. He may have one side a little stronger than the other. It's important to actually come to a stop. There we go. Stop that way. One or two, and then I could even stop right there. All right, but it's important to come to a stop and notice how I'm actually moving down. So the legs are turning quickly. I'm moving down. I do have a high edge angle, but if I move down, I can help to stand on this outside ski a little bit more than the inside one. That's gonna help me get out of it and go the other way. Let's try some in the trees here. So I'll give you a little demo, right? And as I'm going down here, right? If I see a tree or something, I might wanna be able to stop right before it versus running right into it. So I'm gonna turn, boom. Just stopping right before these. Could even be some big powder in there, all right? So now that we've practiced kind of stopping in front of them, let's, we can almost stop, but instead of stopping, I'm gonna keep on going. So, oh, okay, I need to keep on moving. And instead of coming to a complete stop, now I'm starting to flow, pick my way through the trees. And that's how I'm skiing the trees. So take a look at that turn comparison pressure metric and see which side is maybe stronger and which side is weaker. Pay a careful attention to the weaker side and maybe practice more repetitions on that side. Let's see if we can get that weaker side up to the stronger side. All right, here we go. I'm gonna give you a couple tactics to help you improve your line choice when you're skiing the trees. All right, so our first tactic, what we're gonna do is look at a general zone analysis. If you zoom out for a little bit, you just look at different places. If you're new to trees, you're gonna look for the places that are a little bit more open, all right? Because it's really important that we wanna ski the spaces or the gaps, not the actual trees. What I mean by that is we don't wanna look at the trees, instead we wanna look where we wanna go so let me give you some examples here. From where I'm standing right here, I've got really three options that I'm looking at right now. Over here, I've got a little bit closer together trees. Uh, might be a little trickier to pick my line, but they're smaller and the snow is a little bit more untracked. In the middle here, I've got a mix of some tracks that have been skied up. Um, maybe it's a little bit steeper, not as steep, but there's still some ways to go and it's not completely wide open. Over here, I've got, it's very wide open. There's only some big trees in my path. I'm gonna go ahead that way first. It's a little bit more tracked out with the snow, but because it's my first time in the trees, I just really wanna get comfortable with what's the snow doing and give myself the best options to go around things. I wanna set myself up for success. How am I gonna do that? I'm not gonna ski the run the whole entire way. Instead, I'm gonna ski five to 10 turns, and then I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna chunk down the run, and that's gonna give me the ability to kind of pay attention to the fact that a lot of things are coming at me. I've got trees coming at me, I've got stumps, I've got roots, I've got snow conditions, they're changing, the pitch is changing. There's a lot of things to take in. All right, so I'm gonna go through here. Okay, now it's gonna open up a little bit for me. All right. Not so bad for the first time through. It's a little bit wider open here. Okay, it gives myself a little more room for error. And now I can kind of take a look. It's pretty open here, but I may try to dip into some of the trees over to the right. Here we go. So in here, I'm looking, it's a little bit wider open. A little more skied up. And now I've got some options in between here. It's over this roll. All right, I'm looking for where can I sneak? Maybe I can go around this way. Now it's gonna get a little tighter. Whoop. I'm gonna 
I'll sneak on through. So I keep looking for where I want to go, not where I am. Another step is that when I get out into the open and maybe it's a little more skied up, sometimes I'll start to get some moguls or little bumps. In the trees, I'm actually looking for those kind of things. Why? Because whenever I'm on top of a mogul and if I try to turn on the top of it, there's less resistance on the tips and the tails of my skis. So it's really easy for me to make those quick turns. I can make some redirection changes pretty quickly by being on the top versus being in the trough. All right, and how do you know you're gonna be doing this well? Or what are you gonna be feeling? At some point, you won't need to think about it anymore. You'll be in the trees, you'll be making decisions on the fly, you'll be cutting through little lines, looking for opportunities, little windows of how you can sneak through two trees, and you're gonna be hooting and hollering all the way down. And I'm gonna do that right now. Woohoo! So now we're gonna take your skiing from surviving the trees to being thriving in the trees. This is what the best skiers do. When you watch the best skiers, they're not thinking about it. They're just looks like it's effortless and they're just being able to go wherever they want and they have so many choices. What we're gonna focus on is turn shape and turn shape roundness. We're gonna to try to make very rounded S turns and something that can help me is something called a corridor drill. What I'm gonna use is this snowmobile track where I have three lines in the snow. I've got the track from the snowmobile in the middle, and I've got two outside ski lines. I'm gonna to try to plant my pole in the middle of the tread track, and then the ski tracks, I'm gonna to try to get my skis to the outside. All right, it's gonna create a shorter turn for me, which is important in the trees, and it's gonna help my timing and my rhythm. Now, if you don't have a, a snow making or a snowmobile track, all you gotta do is imagine three lines down the slope somewhere. All right, so if you're doing the drill, you can take out your phone and you can get into free ski mode. You can start recording and afterwards, you can check the turn shape metric and see if you're doing this well. If your scores are pretty high, there's a good chance that you're making some rounded S shapes. If, you, if your score's a little bit lower, then you got some more work to do. But if you keep practicing this drill, that will really bring these scores up. So the important thing to remember is if your scores do go down, just remember that you're continuously trying to make those S-shaped rounded turns through the trees, right? And if you need a little bit of help, you can always come back over to the groom and then take it back into the trees. Okay, so I'm doing the corridor drill. I'm planting on the, tre the tread of the snowmobile track. Feet are going to the outside. Feels like I'm doing this well. Turns are nice and smooth and rounded. All right, a lot of people have trouble. They might be twisting their skis too much, and twisting it, and that's not creating a very smooth. So you have to allow the pressure to build up a little bit and allow it to go around. But I'm always planning my pull down the hill. This just helps me with the flow and the timing. And this is what I'm trying to do in the trees. Hey, so remember, this takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of practice. So look at the turn shape metrics, okay? Spend some time on the grooms, go back into the trees, and then come back out. It may not happen overnight, and I am still working on things in the trees, all right? So spend some time, practice, practice, practice. Well, thank you for taking this lesson with me. I hope we've improved your confidence in learning how to ski trees or spending some time in the trees. So what did we do in this lesson? Well, first we talked a little bit about some tips to manage or minimize some of the risk in the trees. Next, we used some drills like the hockey stop 
help us really focus on that rapid movements of our legs, all right, and also being able to control in the trees our speed, where we were gonna go. Next, we moved into some talk about where we wanna go, how we improve our line, our flow through the trees, and finally, we worked on some turn shape metrics to help really smooth out our turns by using a corridor drill so we can really make some nice symmetrical S's through the turns, through the trees, and really find our flow. One of the things I love skiing about the trees is usually the snow is a lot better, there's less people in there, and it's really fun. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope to see you out there in the trees, maybe venture off from the groomers into the trees some more, and you'll have more confidence, you'll have more fun, and we'll see you next time.